Hey everyone, welcome to this CUBE Conversation. I'm your host, Lisa Martin. Madura Miskaski joins me again, co-founder and VP of product at Platform9. Madura, it's great to see you. Welcome back to the CUBE. Lisa, great to see you again. Thank you for having me. So I think we last spoke with you, at, I think it was KubeCon a few months ago. What's going on at Platform9 since we last spoke? Give us the scoop. Yes, lots of things happening. I think the most recent one that I'm very excited to share is 5.8 release of Platform 9 Managed Kubernetes and Managed KubeWord is out. And um, just a quick note on KubeWord is not many people are familiar with what KubeWord is. It is Kubernetes native virtualization technology. So KubeWord really enables you to run VMs, virtual machines side by side with containers on your Kubernetes clusters. Um, it's a Kubernetes, uh, it's a you know one of the CNC of validated Kubernetes add-ons, and it has been in development for several years now. And we at Platform9 are finally ready to release it as a generally available as a GA-ready version as part of managed Kubernetes. So that's the exciting news. Exciting. What's the tagline for 5.8? I know there's a lot in there about controlling costs, but what's that overall tagline? And then can you kind of break it down into some of the key features that are going to be available for your customers. Yeah, so you know our mission has always been to accelerate your cloud native journey, right, in the fastest and the most cost effective way possible. And so the tagline on uh, 5.8 is very consistent with that. It is essentially help you accelerate your existing legacy workloads as well as your new cloud native workloads all on the same underlying hardware footprint, whether it's in your private data centers or in a public cloud with a cost focus, right? So cloud native acceleration with cost focus is still the overall tagline, but there is details around how exactly 5.8 in a specific way enables that for you. So target audience, IT infrastructure, platform engineering, developers, DevOps teams, walk us through some of the, the ways in which this will help organizations control costs. Cause obviously that's, that's a huge priority for every business. Absolutely. So definitely target audience, like you said, is um, the IT organizations, lots of large existing virtualized environments, right? That typically have VMware installed in them or some of the other more traditional um, uh, virtualization technologies or stacks like CloudStack or OpenStack. We ourselves have been, you know, big uh, promoters and deployers of OpenStack for several years. Uh, and prior to that, I spent several years at VMware. So, you know, we have a really good understanding of the, you know, the lay of the land as far as virtualization goes. Um, so those are the target environments and target profiles, right, for this release. And um, what uh, PMK with KubeWord with this 5.8 release really enables is it allows you to take hundreds or even thousands of your existing um, virtualized workloads, right? Let's say you have a large VMware environment on a traditional data center across say one or multiple data centers, thousands of virtual machines, right? You can now with this release take that environment with a specific migration plan and tooling that Platform 9 will you know, enable and provide to you and carve out a strategy to move all of that over to Kubernetes and KubeWord with Platform 9 and PMK. So enterprises can migrate, you said hundreds, even thousands of VMs from legacy virtualization products. Obviously there's some significant cost benefits there. Talk about some of the key solutions or use cases that 5.8 is really targeted to solve. Yeah, so two sort of common use cases, right? Which are also kind of key target use cases for platform nine. One is um, traditional virtualized environments, but with a very heavy focus on cost saving, right? So that's a primary environment. You're a large enterprise running virtualized environment. You want to continue using virtualization, but you want to cut your costs down by a third. And that's in general, a big theme, right? Today in the, you know, given the macroeconomics, cost savings is really top of the mind for all enterprises. And, and KubeWord really plays extremely well into that narrative because it gives you access to a modern cloud native virtualization technology. So you don't compromise on any of the key features, functionalities that in your virtualization stack you love today and you rely on, uh, such as high availability, like migration, SLA for your VMs, performance. So you don't compromise on any of that uh, because the Kubo technology is mature enough to now be able to address all of these enterprise use cases. And it has been for a while. Um, but by moving over to KubeWord, you will save on at least, you know, you will bring down your costs to potentially a third or so, which is a pretty significant um, savings, you know, more than 70% of cost savings. 
So that's definitely one key use case. The second key use case is if you're running edge environments, right? And edge locations uh, potentially for telco customers or retail stores, um, the resource footprint, footprint or bandwidth at the edge site is always a challenge. You have maybe one to at the most three physical servers and you need to run your entire environment there. And so being able to run both VMs with containers on an edge location with limited resource footprint and bandwidth is another very key location. And we in fact have large scale customers, um, you know, that use us with KubeWord um, and Kubernetes for that use case today. It, out at the edge, we know co some companies are struggling out there. You know, we, we think of the retail edge and some of the, so many of the implementations that happened during the pandemic. How, what are some of the challenges that you see customers facing and how is 5.8 going to really eliminate those challenges at the edge? Yeah, so, you know, the common challenge is, um, you know, the pattern with edge sites is you have hundreds and thousands of them, potentially thousands. Um, so think of them as a large footprint of micro data centers, right? Um, when you have such a large and diverse footprint and their geographical locations may be spread all across the world, you want to utilize as much automation as possible all the way from your physical servers all the way up to when your application gets deployed, right? And a lot of existing technologies will focus on automation when it comes to deploying that app but not necessarily on the automation all the way down to the stack. For example, what happens once you rack and stack and power on a physical server in a coffee store, um, you know, who needs to go in there in person and configure some things, install some Windows apps, et cetera, maybe, so that you can then do some automated app deployment on top. And so we address that problem. We think that's one of the biggest challenges, right? Around being able to, uh, around, you know, retailers, uh, telco companies being able to leverage a lot more of cloud native technology and a lot more of just, um, you, you know, more of the recent uh, cutting edge uh, technologies in general, right? Because technology adoption gets hampered if you don't have as much automation in your stack. So that's the problem that we address at its heart. Uh, the platform is all about complete, you know, software as a service powered automation. And so we enable that by taking over your environment from the moment your servers are powered on. And we do everything from operating system install all the way to installing Kubernetes, KubeWord, and then your applications. Talk a little bit about some of the testing that you guys did at scale. We, we, we talked earlier about hundreds of thousands of VMs, but you guys tested this at scale, a few nodes in thousands of locations for edge cases, hundreds of nodes in a few locations for data center, or public cloud regions. Talk a little bit about some of the testing at scale that that platform I'm did for 5.8. Yeah, absolutely. So one of the benefits we have is we have existing large scale enterprise customers that are actually deploying us at really high scale. So the product does get tested on a regular basis through that, but specifically for every GA release of offline products, whether it's the 5.8 release or otherwise, we invest in a significant scale testing exercise, right? And so one of those we did for this release uh, specifically with networking focus, because some of our customers are planning to run large scale, um, you know, VNF workloads, uh, you know, which are very networking heavy and they rely on certain core network acceleration technologies like DPDK and SRIOV, et cetera. So we invested in a very large scale testing exercise with a large, um, the, you know, server footprint, large VM footprint on top, and we specifically tested for these um, networking heavy workloads. And in fact, in some cases that we found uh, for this one specific customer where their existing environment was Cloud Stack, which is one of those um, virtualization technologies that we spoke about, uh, we found that the performance for components like their Palo Alto firewall, VNF, for example, improved by about 300% or so. So a pretty significant performance improvement compared to what they were used to and what they've been running so far. That's nice, that's a significant performance improvement. What's been some of the other customer feedback on 5.8 that you guys have gotten that, that it really excite you in terms of the trajectory that the technology is on? Yeah, so I think the consistent feedback has been the this the, the product and technology combined with the core benefits that Platform Line already offers, right? Which is completely savings on your operational costs, uh, savings on your migration costs, et cetera. 
through a you know SaaS managed model, also available on prem, but uh, you know in both form factors. Uh, combining that with Kubeword being generally available and completely production ready, really allows going back to those two use cases for the you know the traditional environments as, as well as the edge workloads to now run efficiently while keeping the cost as one of the primary elements, right? So from some of our customers, we've heard that these performance enhancements, for example, are really enabling them to move away from that legacy virtualized environment to this modern stack with the faith and peace of mind that this stack is completely production ready and it will cover them for all of their key use cases while saving costs. So that's been kind of the general theme of feedback. Got it. So for customers that you talk to or prospects uh, where they're struggling with IT modernization, their initiatives aren't as successful, what's your secret sauce? What's your superpower? Why Platform 9? What do you say? Yeah, so I think typically that struggle comes from not have, being able to see a cost-effective and concrete plan towards migrating from what you have today towards the the end state that you know you want to achieve and you you know you have uh, you have a view of what that is and so we attack that problem at every phase of it right uh, starting from migration and being able to provide the automated migration tools which by the way tends to be one of the biggest challenges which is I have say large scale VMware environment I've been utilizing that for ten years I want to cut my costs I want to go more cloud native more Kubernetes but I don't have even a good way to take my thousands of VMs and I don't even know if they will run well on Kubernetes. So people even have fundamental uh, questions and lack of knowledge. Um, and so we kind of attack that problem at the entire, you know, all of those phases from being able to educate you on how the migration is going to work to actually completely owning and driving that migration for you to then giving you a 99.9% .9 SLA for your workloads once you start running them on platform nine, right? Which means our neck is on the line. We owe you service credit if we are not able to meet that SLA for a certain period of time, which is a very high level of commitment. And that also helps us build a level of trust yeah. with our customers. Um, and it, you know, lets them know, uh, it gives them the assurance that there's a partner in this journey that is always going to have their back. Oh, and that's so critical, that trust that you mentioned. It's currency, right, these days. And and your customers know and, and trust Platform Man and what you guys are delivering. You talked about controlling costs. You talked about some of the key features and functionalities. What's, what's the general availability plans? When and where can customers get their hands on this? Yeah, so 5.8 release is actually generally available now. So the best way uh, to learn more about it is to go go to our website, go to the documentation site, read about the release notes, read just in general about more about the release. And then the best way to get their hands on it is to contact us if you are a new prospect. If you're an existing customer, reach out to support and they'll make sure that you get the latest bits of the release. Excellent. Major, do you have a favorite customer story in all your years of being co-founder and VP of product that you think really just nails the value prop of what Platform Mind delivers? Yeah, absolutely. So I think there are many, there are many, right? So one of the things we are extremely proud about is our 100% CSAT score year over year. And that's also why many of our customers, uh, you know, stay and grow and expand with us over multiple years. I think most recently, one of our customers, an edge environment, right? Uh, and they have a very large distributed footprint um, across multiple store locations. And one of their Kubernetes upgrades was a particularly challenging experience, um, you know, which typically, uh, it, which is not uncommon, upgrades are some of the most complex components of Kubernetes or area where uh, things may go wrong. And the way that a combination of our product and our customer success team using our software, right, which gathers, one of the things that our software does is it gathers all the, all the intelligence about what's going on in your environment and collects that data and feeds it back to our support team. And so when the support team works with the customer, it's like they have have some super visibility into, into your environment that you may not even have. And so uh, I, I remember and quote the customer's words, there were some magical heroics that went into place in helping us go successfully through this challenge in the Kubernetes upgrade. And I um, I really took those words to heart and um, you know it also resulted in a big expansion for Platform 9 with that customer. So um, that was just one of the recent one, but um, yeah, m m many such experiences and uh, it makes you feel grateful and, and happy for doing what you do. Absolutely, there's nothing better than that customer validation. I always think there's nothing more potent and powerful than the voice of the customer really articulating that value prop and showing 
big significant performance improvements, cost reduction, et cetera. Um, last question for you as we, I think we talked to you in the, in the fall, I think John did, and it was 5.6. Here we are just a few months later, 5.8. What is on the horizon that excites you in your role? Yeah, no, absolutely. So there's multiple things happening at Platform Line right now, which are extremely exciting. On one end, we spoke, just spoke about virtualization. That's a trend we are really focusing on and investing in. Um, on the other end, with the overall cost saving theme, you know, with that in mind, there are, you know, the other biggest area where customers, environments, uh, et cetera, face cost pressure is running Kubernetes on the public cloud. And we're building something really exciting in that area as well that should help customers save a ton of money when running Kubernetes on the public cloud, right? So um, just in general, this theme of helping customers save costs while running their cloud native technologies is really, really exciting to us. Hugely valuable. Madura, thank you so much for joining me today. And from what I understand, there's a free consultation that folks can get with experts. We're going to pop a link in below. Madura Miskowski, co-founder and VP of product at Platform9. Thank you for coming on theCUBE and joining me as this CUBE conversation. Thank you, Lisa. Have a great day. You too. We want to thank you for watching and say keep it right here for more action on theCUBE, your leader in hybrid tech event coverage.